Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Groisman, and today I'd like to talk about the gut and the long COVID, including gut health. So this study in Nature uh, looked at gut complications from long COVID, and it was a fairly large study uh, looking at 5.6 million patients. And what they did was, was they, they had a cohort, uh, which is people who um, still had uh, COVID, but were matched by age, race, sex, obesity, smoking, if they had uh, cardiovascular disease or not, if they had kidney disease, diabetes, and so forth. And um, what they found was these uh, factors were not a factor. Uh, they weren't influencing um, if you were to develop the complications um, from long COVID regarding the gut. So the majority of things found uh, were abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation, okay? And some people as well had vomiting. The vagus nerve, again, going back to dysautonomia, um, since we know long COVID can cause dysautonomia, the vagus nerve, uh, one of the longest nerves in our body, controls peristalsis, which is how things and food and drink move through our bowel uh, from, from the swallowing through the esophagus into the stomach and so forth. Um, when there's vagus nerve dysfunction, which again, we know happens in long COVID, the nerve is thickened and there's a low vagus nerve tone. So these, this can lead to diarrhea, this can lead to abdominal cramping, gastroparesis where food doesn't get digested properly or move through, abdominal pain and nausea. So let's talk about the gut barrier. What is this? So what we're looking at is these junctions between the cells of the, of the intestinal tract of the stomach. Okay, and what's in the gut stays here normally, and on this side we have blood and lymphatics. So a healthy gut has these nice little barrier between each cell that prevents things that are in our food and drink because it's not sterile, let's face it, there's toxins and there's bacteria and viruses potentially in our food uh, from penetrating the gut and, and getting into our bloodstream. However, in leaky gut, these barriers are broken and don't work well. Uh, one important marker is zonulin here. And this study shows this, this could be used as a biomarker to look for leaky gut. So as you can see, these junctions are made up of a lot of different proteins. Um, and it's very similar to the blood brain, 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 yeah, blood brain barrier. That's a tongue twister. Let's talk about leaky gut symptoms. So uh, these are all common, um, chronic diarrhea, constipation and bloating, uh, abdominal pain or abdominal burning, um, nutritional deficiencies, things like B12 and iron um, because of poor absorption. Uh, we can see fatigue and low energy. We could see headaches and confusion. Um, sometimes depression, anxiety, and ADHD occur. And I'll go into why um, neurologic or brain symptoms are even involved here. Um, difficulty concentrating. Again, could be part of brain fog. Skin, skin problems such as acne or eczema, and also allergies. Um, joint pain and widespread body inflammation. So let's talk about the axes. So long COVID, um, well, actually, let's, let's backtrack to the leaky gut um, or the gut itself. There's bidirectional communication. In other words, the gut talks to different organs and the different organs talk to the gut. And this happens both through nerves and also through uh, inflammatory mediators and basically chemical signals. So the most important one is the gut and brain axis. And this is where the confusion and um, the brain fog and the fatigue can come in. And uh, also depression, anxiety, and ADHD. Uh, because what can happen through the leaky gut is not only can toxins uh, basically translocate from the gut into the bloodstream, but also uh, bacteria and viruses themselves can translocate. Um, and they release uh, mediators and, and substances that can affect the brain. Um, there's also 
a direct line between the heart and the gut and the lung and the gut and the kidneys and the liver. And I placed different uh, articles showing, um, you know, these axes have been established. This autonomia, again, going back to the vagus nerve, um, this autonomia can cause gastrointestinal standstill or gastroparesis and basically nothing moves and you can get bacteria overgrowth in the small bowel called SIBO or small bowel overgrowth. And this, the dysautonomia, the leaky gut, is also associated with POTS and MCAS. Um, they all occur together. It's a, it's a correlation. One doesn't necessarily cause the other, but they kind of occur together. So what do you do to prevent and treat, you know, leaky gut? Um, one is fiber. Just, uh, you know, taking in soluble and insoluble uh, fiber. Vitamin D has been shown to help. Um, avoiding inflammatory foods, uh, non-inflammatory diet. So things like gluten, dairy, and processed foods um, can inflame your gut. Reduce your stress and improve your sleep quality. Um, reducing taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as Advil. Eliminate alcohol and smoking, or at least reduce it. Um, reduce carbs because carbs have been associated with inflammation. Things like probiotics, active cultures, fermented foods so like uh, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut um, can also help. Again, because they'll have active um, bacteria in it. Um, and, um, and yeast type cultures. And uh, lastly is peptides. Uh, BCP-157 and KPV have both been shown to be helpful uh, for leaky gut. Um, BCP is known as the gastric peptide. Uh, it mimics um, a substance that we already produce in our gut. And it's very stable in gastric acid and gastric juice. Uh, KPV is also an anti-inflammatory, and it's been helpful with repair of the intestinal, um, intestinal tract. It's anti-inflammatory. That's pretty much what I can say about it. Thank you so much, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this.